Tonight, home stretch. Alberta election campaigns wrap up as voting day nears. Plus, furniture flip. A Lloydminster woman teaches how to make old items look brand new. And showmanship. Cattle in Lloydminster are looking a little better after the 4-H grooming clinic. In sports, tea time. The golf season is finally here at the Lloydminster Golf and Curling Centre. This is New Cap News with Mike Baden. Good evening. The Alberta provincial election is in its last days, and Premier Alison Redford is making her final push, which landed her in, in St. Paul. Redford was welcomed by a room full of supporters, and with only a couple days left until the election, the Premier is feeling confident. I'm excited because what I'm hearing from Albertans is they're very optimistic about the future of the province. They're excited about the plan that we've put in place with respect to investing in communities, commitment to public health care, making sure that there are schools and infrastructure in place. As the PC's campaign heads into the final days before the election, Redford says she'll be busy traveling through central Alberta talking to as many Albertans as we can about our hopes and our dreams for the future of this province, which I think are very similar to Albertans. Election polls open at 8 a.m. on Monday morning. Celebrating Earth Day is not only about recycling, but upcycling as well. What is upcycling? Local expert and artist Michelle Lake gave a seminar at the Restore today in preparation of Earth Day to show the border city how to take reducing and reusing even further. Whether it's an old table, door, or mug holder, you can create functional items and beautiful home decor from objects that are thrown aside and may seem old and outdated. They really want to promote people reusing and recycling, so they've asked me if I would do a couple of upcycle demonstrations and uh, take some things that I've found here at the ReStore and make them into something different or something newer. Lake suggests that citizens think twice before throwing away any garbage. If you are unsure about an item, check online or bring it to the restore. Well, I would say before you get rid of something, think of, first of all, where it would end up. And then second, somebody can always use it, I think. You can bring it to the restore, you can sell it at a garage sale, and people like me will come and buy it because <laughs> I think, oh, that's so cool. Earth Day takes place tomorrow, and Elise joins us for a first look at weather, and it was a great day out there today. Yeah, it was really sunny outside, but it was also really windy. We were getting wind gusts up to 50 kilometers per hour at one point, but right now in Lloydminster, we are sitting at 14 degrees with sunny skies, wind coming in from the northwest at 33 km kilometers per hour, 13 in the Lakeland region with partly sunny skies and 15 in the Battlefords. I'll have your full forecast and what we're expecting in the next 24 hours coming up in a few minutes. Coming up after the break, a millet mother has been convicted of manslaughter in the deaths of her two young sons. The Lloydminster Air Cadets held its annual Tag Day today to fundraise money for events throughout the year. The cadets were stationed across the city, raising money and meeting people in the community. This is one area where they give back not only to the squadron, but also give back to the community and hopefully uh, give a good impression and let the public know exactly what Air Cadets is all about. Ryder Anderson is a six-year Air Cadets veteran and enjoys giving back. I enjoy volunteering and representing cadets and the Legion and asking for sponsorship for all of the activities we do. It's all really good and goes towards a good cause. Cattle in Lloydminster are looking a little better today after the 4-H grooming clinic. Members of all ages learned how to prepare their animals for the show ring and that it's also a long and very particular process. Notice again, I've left that hair in behind, right? After learning the proper way to wash their cattle, these young kids learned how to clip them and put on the final touches before the show ring. 
it's to teach the kids how to be able to present their calves so that they they know um, how to get them ready for the show ring, um, to, how to groom their hair properly, how to fit them. All to show the good parts of their animal, a valuable asset for marketing their cattle now and in the future. Grooming constantly over the year, getting your calf's hair trained and ready for that final clip day is a very essential part of, of learning how to groom properly. So after they learn to present their newly groomed cattle, the second part of the weekend is having their animals judged, which is happening tomorrow. Emmett joins us for our first look at sports, and Emmett, it's that time of year where playoff hockey's on TV, but everyone wants to go and hit the links as golf courses start opening. It's my favorite time of the year, the yeah. crossover between NHL playoffs and golf. One month and one day after the start of spring, another season has begun, the golf season. After months of cold weather, area residents were able to finally tee one up at the Lloydminster Golf and Curling Center. The course is ready to play on, but not yet in pristine condition. The par 3 tee boxes are temporary and the bunkers still need to be drained. Uh, we aerated the greens so they're a little, little patchy in some spots but you know they'll see a little bit of heat and a little bit of moisture and we'll be ready to go, it'll be awesome. The club professionals have made lots of changes this year and feel they're ready to make good on their constant Twitter hashtag 2012 PGA Facility of the Year. You know, we put it there because that's the goal that we hope to achieve. Uh, we're putting water bottles in the carts. Um, we got Kyle Duffin as the new head pro downstairs and uh, Mulligan upstairs doing the uh, food and beverage side of it. And just a better a attitude down here. We're going to treat everybody a lot better and uh, hopefully that returns with the, some awards. Perfect. The pro shop also has a wider selection this year, not being limited to just tailor-made products. After a week of the finest senior men's AAA hockey in the country this week, the two best teams in Canada met at the Civic Centre for the finals. It's the Rosetown Red Wings versus the Southeast Prairie Thunder. First period, Jared Jago rings one off the iron, and then right after that, his next shift, he's able to put it in front, but no luck on the wraparound. The Red Wings' top scorer still held pointless. Same period, Jago picks the pocket of the D, puts it on net, big rebound as he'll throw another one in front. But again, they can't get their stick on the puck. It'll go back to the point Carter Smith wires one, but it won't find its target. Wings controlling play until Tim Plett gets the breakaway. Goes five hole. The Thunder with the early 1-0 lead on Plett's second goal in as many nights. Thunder would keep on rolling from there in the third period. They pick the Wings pocket on the turnover. It's Devin LeBlanc who drops it for Brad Purdy. Purdy squeezes it through Harvey. That's all they would need as they are the Allen Cup champions. Moses Waldu has more. Heading into the final, the Southeast Prairie Thunder were a team known for its offensive ability. But heading into the final, it was the defense that really rose to the occasion, shutting down the Red Wings and really tiring them out, and especially in that third period, which resulted in three goals and a 4-1 win over the Red Wings. We were trying to make something happen, and, and that's the way they play. Like They just play that solid, solid system, and they just wait for a turnover. And like you say, it happened twice, and they buried it every time. So, you know, full marks to them. They, they stuck to their guns, and they stayed patient, and it paid off for them. Well, a lot of guys had to change their games. I mean, we got lots of offensive players on our team, and I think that's what made us so dynamic is every line could have scored. And, and uh, you know, some lines took it upon themselves. We're going to play more defense, make sure we, we, we keep the puck out of our net, not in their net. We have so many role guys on our team, and uh, we knew coming into this that we can score goals. And uh, I think the guys that had to did. And, uh, obviously, when you only have to score two or three goals a game, it makes it pretty easy on the forward. So. Credit to them, they kept coming. And, uh, they came in waves. And we gave everything we had for two periods there and emptied the tanks in the third. And I think there's just nothing left. And, uh... Only being line mates for a short period of time, Brad Purdy, Andrew Strom, and Devin LeBlanc combined for 20 points in four games. Definitely instrumental in helping the Steinbeck team win their first ever Allen Cup. Reporting from the 2012 Allen Cup, I'm Moses Wildew with Newcap Sports. What a week that was. The Southeast Prairie Thunder, your Allen Cup champions. Congratulations to them. That's your look at Newcap Sports. Stay tuned for more news and weather after the break.